Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you in Jesus name for every opportunity and privilege to get into your word, to share your word with your people. Lord God, we thank you uh, for the bountiful gift of revelation, knowledge. Uh, Holy Spirit, enlighten us, illuminate us in Jesus mighty name. Speak through my lips, think through my mind, look through my eyes, Lord, just move throughout my being. I yield to you, Lord God, in Jesus mighty name. So we are going to finish our series on the power of faith and patience. Our foundation scripture, Hebrews 6, 12. Let's look at that. Hallelujah. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Through faith and patience inherit the promises through faith and so it's going to take more than just faith to inherit the promises it's going to take faith and something else amen i wish in my life that it had been just faith alone <laughs> many times i'll be honest with you but it takes faith and and this word here for patience uh, means to just stay the same, be consistently constant. In the verse upward from that, he told them, he said, uh, in verse 11, we desire that every one of you show the same diligence. See that? Be the same. We want you to show the same diligence. Don't just start off diligent. Stay that way. And like I mentioned before, when it says, uh, be not slothful, that word slothful is not dealing with laziness at all. It has nothing to do with laziness, but it has everything to do with attitude and the way we do things. Amen. You see that uh, in many marriages where when the honeymoon is over, all of a sudden the, the goosebumps leave. <laughs> so what you have to do is apply yourself to have the same attitude, the same diligence. That's how you inherit the promises. Some people just don't hold on long enough. Some people just don't. Um, I know uh, one thing the Lord told me uh, just yesterday. You know, uh, sometimes we think it's okay if you drag foot a little bit as long as you get the job done. But that's not okay. That's actually a form of defeat. Because not only do you have to be obedient, but you have to be willing if you're going to eat the good of the land. You're not going to get away with I'm standing on what your word says, Lord, I'm speaking what you said, but you're showing up without that same excitement and zeal for the things of God. So that's constant self-management. Constant self-management. Instead of always trying to manage the circumstances, really you'll win if you learn how to manage you. Amen? Amen. In the midst of tests and trials, what do we do? We forget all about us. Fix that. Look at that. We forget all about us, and we try to fix the circumstance, the situation. Why don't you go, uh, go behind me? Uh, walk behind. Wait, 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 wait. Kai can reach. Turn that off. Yeah. That that. Don't just unplug it. Yep. Not the light. Yeah, the fan. You see the plug. Yeah. No, it's that big one. The second one, yeah. He got it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in the midst of circumstances, we're waiting on our change. We're waiting on that sickness to be gone. We're waiting on that bill to be paid. We're waiting on those finances to flow. But that's all we're doing is just waiting. See, the Bible here is not talking about waiting. It's talking about being consistently constant. Your praise ought to be like it was before the trial came. Your excitement ought to be, oh, you're not getting the promises. 
You're going to have to go make things happen yourself. You can forget about manifesting things from God. And I don't know about you, but I didn't get into this thing to lose. I didn't get into this thing so that I can look good, tote my Bible around. No, I believe the book. I believe it. And if it's wrong, I'm going to have to prove it for myself. I'm not going to let the devil talk me into not trying. That's like somebody telling you how well they can fight. You ever see, uh, I watch boxing, you ever see how they do in those face-off and press conferences? That's, how you, that's usually how you win the fight during the press conference. If you can convince this other man and defeat him mentally that you're better, instead of, not me, you know, we'll see fight day, who's better. And a lot of times all the devil has to do is threaten people. No, you're going to have to show me. And if the word doesn't work, you're going to have to show me that it doesn't work. Because I'm going to put it to work. Hallelujah. So, in the midst of waiting on God to do things, you got to understand, you self-management. Greater is he who rules his own spirit than he that takes the city. So, the Lord told me that even though you're saying the right things, even though you're doing the right things, you're actually losing because of the way you're showing up. You're not winning just because you showed up. You're being defeated by the way you're showing up. So it's those that through faith and being consistently constant, they're the ones who inherit the promises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is they're the ones. Hallelujah. Praise. I did uh, three points over these couple of weeks. The first one we learned that faith, be, uh, faith and patience combined builds character and maturity. You see that? Something's happening to you while you wait. Hallelujah. Something's happening in you. Uh, faith combined with patience. Also causes you to possess your soul. Gives you authority over your mind, will, and emotions. Amen? And then thirdly, what we're dealing with today is it'll cause you, when you combine patience with your faith, it'll cause you to inherit the promises. Most people won't stick around long enough to see the end result of God's word. When you can stand forever, you won't stand for long. Now, let me say something about that. Sticking around, like we heard of absentee fathers, you don't have to leave home to be an absentee father. <laughs> well, just because you're still going to church don't mean you're still sticking around. You're not involved anymore. You're not involved as much. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? The consistency has gone. The same diligence is not there. It's getting the best of you. Life is weighing you down. This walk of faith has got real to you. You thought you was going to learn something about faith Friday and then Saturday morning you was going to be walking in abundance. and walk, You see what I mean? Well, it didn't take you that long to get defeated. It didn't take, uh, excuse me, it took you longer than that to, to learn how to walk in sin, sickness, disease, death, fear. It took you, did you know Adam didn't know how to die? He wasn't yet trained in, di in dying. That was a whole new church that the devil started. Now we got to teach these people how to die. It took them Nearly a thousand years to get it down packed. <laughs> Methuselah finally said, well, I got it. Here it is. Finally learned how to die. <laughs> and I am convinced that we in the church are still scratching the surface of faith and the glory of God. 
because when the way I think of it is there was enough power there was enough natural electrical power and resources in the earth in Noah's day to build smartphones GPS systems the only thing that was lacking was our knowledge of everything and, and how to utilize it but you know God didn't wait till 2020 to start putting new things in there there's nothing in the earth that wasn't in the earth then except information knowledge well when on the day of Pentecost Jesus released into the body of Christ enough power to raise everybody on earth from the dead but we just know enough about it to run around the church every now and then <laughs> that's how much of it we know how to use that's why it said God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shine in our heart to be for the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that's in the face of Jesus. Not just the light, but the knowledge of that glory. He wants us to know. He wants us to advance in faith technology. Hallelujah. Amen. That's enough. Well, you didn't learn how to be defeated overnight. So what makes you think you're going to learn how to walk in victory overnight? Hallelujah. And all of the destruction that we see in the world, that's 6,000 years of church, fallen church, twisted devil church. <laughs> The first time a man was born again was when Adam died spiritually. He received a new nature. And from there on, they began to be re-educated in the laws of physics, five sense reasoning. So we're looking at 6,000 years of the devil's church as opposed to 2,000 years of Jesus' church. And you get mad when preachers hit and miss. We see through a glass darkly. Hallelujah. But we're getting this thing. We are getting this thing. We're learning. We just learned how to talk. And we still you know perfecting that that's not easy the tongue no man can tame with natural power that's that takes some real consecrate consecration and concentrated meditation in the word to discipline yourself to say only what i hear my father says that takes some consistency when you make up your mind, you will stand forever. You won't have to stand for long. Because huh? if you compare 20 years of standing to your willing to stand forever, that's just, that's not even a nanosecond. <laughs> you, know how to, you know how to make 100 years short? Make an a, 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 a eternal commitment. <laughs> then 100 years, you won't be bothered by it. <laughs> well how long are you going to stand there saying what God said how long are you going to keep doing that expecting God forever then you won't be offended if you find out it's going to take you 15 or 20 years yeah. Amen. Like, oh that's nothing compared to forever I was willing to stand forever right. hallelujah I'm an eternal being yeah, right. so I make eternal decisions yeah. I speak eternal words and this joy I have is eternal right. hallelujah you can keep the same attitude you got to stir yourself up right. don't think you winning because you showed up I'm preaching I need to get to this Come on. start off you know you start you get wine, winding me up now <laughs> Don't think you're doing well showing up with a funky attitude. Everybody praising and you sitting there. Well, I don't feel it. That's your problem. <laughs> that, you just told me what your problem was. 
Satan has control of you because he's Lord of that filling ram. Right, feel it. I got to feel it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. And hold your place there. I want to go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Hallelujah. You just want us to know you know the Bible's in order. The book. So what? You need to learn. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon verse 1, chapter 2. The tower. And will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision or the word of God. God's word is the vision. God already has a plan for you. Hallelujah. I know you got a little plan. But do you ever notice your plans are motivated by fear? You make adjustments every couple of weeks or so. <laughs> One minute that was your church home. <laughs> that God sent you to the next minute. You're not sure. Circumstances. Hallelujah. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. We're talking about the written word. Write, read. You see that? Write, read. For the vision, God's written word, is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, listen, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not Terry, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. He shall live by waiting to see what God said and waiting for it. But not just waiting, waiting with the right attitude. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your countenance lined up with the word as well. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus would go to people that were sick. and Now that man laying down there 38 years paralyzed. 38 years. Jesus told him, will you be made whole? Well, yeah, man, but ain't nobody come pick me up, put me in the water when I need it. And when I try to, you know, when they do, somebody jump in front of me. They rude out here. So he thought he wasn't healed because of rude people. Hallelujah. <laughs> and folks that didn't feel like picking him up. <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's why he thought he wasn't. Jesus said, pick up your mat. Get up, pick up your mat, and go home. Get up, pick up your mat, and go home. In other words, he told this man paralyzed 38 years, act like you will. Well, I am Crystal Shivers, and I trust that Trumpet Call broadcast has been a blessing to you. I believe that you are learning to walk in the light of revelation through the word of God. Remember that these broadcasts are made possible through the financial support of you, the viewers. We appreciate your prayers and your support, and we want to pray a special prayer over your seed today. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for their seed sown, that you will bless them, Lord, and increase their seed in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless.